Paul, I heard you earlier today talk about Utah's front and uh, compare them to Cal and, uh, as being the, among the two best in the conference. You guys didn't have much success moving Cal's guys at all. Mm -hmm. uh, what's different two weeks? At, what do you have to do differently two weeks later to uh, be able to handle what might be the best defensive front in the Pac-12? Yeah. Well, our offensive line has to play very well, and um, they've got – a huge challenge on their hands, and uh, uh, I think there's there's that aspect right there. And then um, we got to find run some run game, obviously, and and um, we're going to have to convert some passes and some challenging situations. Um, so uh, last week against uh, Arizona State, it seemed like the offensive line was <coughs> finishing blocks a little longer. I mean, they they seemed like they had made a concerted effort to drive people after to the whistle and, and sometimes after, including mm -hmm. one that drew a penalty. Mm -hmm. um, was that just, was that something that, that was decided, I mean, something you had to do, decided you had to do, you had to start being a little more aggressive with the front? Yeah, I mean, just continue to try to raise our level of play. It's always a work in progress, and, and those are areas that have been a focus for us to continue to to fight and to fight longer and, and um, you know, for us to grow as a team, we need we need all our positions to continue to do that. Uh, back to Utah, they uh, they have uh, really come on lately, won three games in a row. Their offense hasn't turned the ball over in any of those three games. Um, is that the biggest difference you see, or is it maturity of Hayes? Is it maturity of their offensive line? Is it all of the above? What's what's went into those three consecutive wins? Their consistency running the football and. Um, they still throw it, you know, and uh, but they're they're just more. Um, they've been more consistent throwing the football. They just haven't taken as many shots throwing the football. Um, and then they've they've expanded their run game. They've, they're doing more in their run game, so they've they've committed to that and uh, they've taken care of the football. You know, when you have a great defense and you, your ball control on offense or can you know don't turn the ball over, and you're solid on special teams, you know you, you're gonna. You're going to win games. Uh, you're going to throw a freshman quarterback at him, a red shirt, certainly, but um, still a freshman. Uh, the defense that they play, it's got to be as challenging as he's going to may see for, you know, for a while. Well, yeah, that's true. And, um, but, again, you know, we've, the other ten guys on that football field have got to do their part. And, uh um, so it's it's on everybody's shoulders to to execute whenever they're out there. What is the Connor said last week? He he said that it was it's a little tough learning Todd's offense. It's it's a lot more complicated than he's been used to in his life, and it's taken a while. Did, did you see a light go on sometime in the last few weeks? Well, yeah. I mean, I I think a, a little bit through spring and then through fall, and and. Um, and we do do a lot of things offensively and want to do a lot of things. But I also think that here we ha we, we want to be diverse and we want to be multiple. Um, you know, we're not going to be able to line up into the power eye and, and run just, you know, a balanced, you know, offensive attack when it comes to the pro style quote per se because it's yeah. not the personnel we, we're going to get or the personnel we, we want to get for Washington State. We want to be wide open and multiple. And build us to a situation where we're always highly productive offensively and explosive. And to do that, sometimes you've got to you got to be wide open and, you, and you've got to be multiple. And um, and that's where it's at. And that's why you have a system and a program, and, and you keep repeating um, the teaching, and you you get your athletes to fit into your scheme like we've done. You recruit them into there, and then you you raise them and grow them up. But when you do that in your program, you know when they're young, they develop. And learn a lot like Connor. And after a couple of years, they're ready to go. And I think your program is stronger for being diverse in what you want to do. I may not have phrased that right, but I was kind of looking for Connor's ability to, to understand his role in that offense in the last few weeks. Has that has a light gone on for him? Yeah, for him personally. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think the last three weeks he's done better in practice. That's been really obvious. And you can see his growth in practice. Uh, compared to his previous practices, and then we weren't we couldn't compare games, but we could compare practices, and um, his performance in practice has given us definitely more confidence to put him in the game.
it kind of sound like Paul was uh, it was kind of has he been bearing down in practice more after you guys talked to him? No, I mean I just think he wanted to play and and uh, and um, saw the opportunity that we would play him if he he just kept improving and we wanted him to. We don't want, we didn't want him to get complacent by no means, obviously, but and he, and he won't. But he's just progressed. I mean, anybody that's youthful and young, regardless of position. They're going to continue to develop and grow and get better. That's why we keep saying: the older we get, the better we'll get. And um, he's he's in that growing process. Hey Paul, I take it you had to be surprised, if not shocked, by his performance though the other night. Well, Jim, I was waiting for you to carry me off the field. You told me you were going to do that if we won. You know, I I honestly. God, I, I tried to get down there, and I got down, this is going to sound like a cop-out, but I got down there a little too late, and the security guard told me that he wasn't going to let anybody else on the field, and I, I tried to explain to him that I had this deal where I was going to try and lift the coach and, and have him go off the field with me, and, and the guy wouldn't buy it. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Are you buying that? No, but that's all right. You know, I'll answer your question. Um, you know... Um, I owe you a makeup on that. Yeah. All right. Um, no, really, I, we didn't, obviously, we didn't know he was going to play to that level, else we would have played him a lot longer, you know, ago, but, um, uh, we knew that he could make some plays, we knew that he was going to do some things that, that we weren't getting from the position, and, um, but, but, uh, he really, he really did a great job. Hey, Paul, I was curious <laughs> how, uh, John White compares with, uh, Cameron Marshall from last week, I mean, obviously, you guys did a, a good job of that, you know. Him. Well, <clears throat> you know, there's some similarities. I mean, John's a, a good player. I know John. We recruited John. Um, and uh, he's got good speed. They're more committed to running the ball than um, than uh, Arizona State. And um, so he's going to get his yards. Um, there's no way, you know, it's pretty hard to just say you're going to stop him. But uh, he'll, he'll get his yards. And... Um, uh, he's a good back. He's a really good back. I mean, he's already over a thousand yards in this conference, and that's that's awfully good. Paul, uh, have you uh, made any decisions on who you might to insert on, on kickoff cover? Um, we're still working on a few guys. We'll find. We'll know more in the next uh, two days. Other questions on the line? How's that cut? He's out right now. I don't know what the test, the latest test will be in terms on grading his uh, his concussion. So at this point, Alex Dem uh, Blecker will be the guy moving forward. Now, obviously, there's uh, a win of any sort. It definitely helps the, the morale of the team. But a, a win in a game like Saturday, with all the, the emotions and the very cool spectacles around it, and kind of the back and forth battle and the emergence of a new player after Saturday's win going into this week, what's the morale and the feeling in the locker room with the team? Well, I mean, our morale has always been pretty consistent. You know, I, I, I don't know people on the outside. You know, they're going to have their opinion, but this team. Has always been together. They're working hard, and and um, but yeah, there's a the higher sense probably at this point a higher sense of urgency, um, you know, and importance of this game. And uh, it's good to be in this position. It's it's fun for these seniors that have not been in the 11th week of the season and not had an opportunity to continue to, to strive for a bowl game. So I think there's a, a sense of excitement. Um, but we've got a we know we got a big. Uh, task on our hands, and so we got to be really focused, you know, every day, so we can keep growing. 